program, Prevent. Uh, more than 2,000 of those referred to the scheme in 2015-16 were under the age of 15, including more than 500 girls. Another 2,000 more reported for potential intervention were aged between 15 and 20. Prevent aims to reduce the threat to the UK by stopping people being drawn into terrorism, sometimes being controversial, as you know. Let's now talk to the West Midlands Regional Prevent Lead for Further and Higher Education, Hifsa Haroon Iqbal, and Head of Islamic Studies at the counter-extremism organisation Quilliam, Dr Osama Hassan, and Labour MP Naz Shah, who's a member of the Home Affairs Select Committee. Welcome, all of you. I want to get your reaction, first of all, to the figures. Um, Naz Shah, why don't you give us your reaction to these figures? Uh, morning. morning. Um, I I'm quite alarmed at the figures, really. It reinforces um, a lot of my concerns around prevent, in particular when you took a look at the figures and those that were referred. Um, where, you know, we're talking about the, the press release actually says they had vulnerabilities, but it doesn't actually give us the details. And more than 75% of those referred to channel were no further actions. So what that tells me is that we have a real issue, that we haven't supported people in, in uh, supported certainly the teachers and who told us in the Home First Select Committee they didn't have the right support to implement the prevent duty. So this kind of reinforces my concerns and raises more, really. You mean because pe teachers or faith leaders or doctors or whoever, uh, senior figures in the community, are referring kids and they shouldn't be? Because they don't really know what but they're supposed to be doing. Yeah, if you've got 75% of the referrals that have gone into uh, just from this, if we look at prevent and uh, the, the, the idea that it's toxic, certainly in the Muslim community, it doesn't have any ownership. And if you look at the Islamic extremism referrals, uh, more than 75% are no further action. And that is really, really worrying. If you've referred a child, a young person, uh, and, and that turns out to be actually there's nothing, what they're doing is wrong, then that really, really is worrying for me and it's very alarming. Okay. Um, Osama Hassan, how do you respond to these figures? Uh, they are shocking, but it shows the scale of the problem. And actually, previous figures have shown that about a quarter to a third of these referrals are actually far-right referrals. So yeah, yeah. Th this is not targeting and the we same community. We did reflect that earlier in the programme. Just, just yes, exactly. And, and, and it's, just, it's not true to say that they're toxic in the Muslim communities. We, we have Muslims, hundreds of Muslims work for Prevent. I know of dozens, maybe hundreds of mums and dads, Muslim mums and dads, who are grateful for Prevent. They've called Prevent to stop their children joining ISIS in Syria, for example. But uh, the 75% is actually encouraging. This shows that there is a, actually a high bar. So referrals go to a local channel panel, mm -hmm. and only serious cases are actually taken on as cases. So 75% are weeded out. What's happening here is that this is a new duty on schools, and a lot of teachers are worried that if they miss somebody, they could lose their job for missing a potential terrorist. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, in the initial uh, one or two years, I think it's to be expected that there would be a lot of uh, uh, false referrals, if you like, or but, but what impact cautious would that, ones. If you, were, if, if you were 16, if I was 16, we were referred knowing that we'd done nothing, but because a teacher wasn't quite sure or, or perhaps had suspicions that were inaccurate, it would have a real impact on you, wouldn't it? Um, it could do, depending on the individual circumstances. I'm quite shocked by the figures, but there's also a part because of me that Because you think they're thinks, high? I think they're high, but there's also a part of me that... that thinks that I need to see more. Um, it, it's difficult to make a judgment without knowing exactly what's happened to the number of people who have gone forward, why they were referred. They may not necessarily have gone on um, to be referred on for further interventions, but they may have needed support in other areas. For me, the important factor is that we need to understand that PREVENT is very much about safeguarding. It is very much about trying to stop people from getting involved in things that could potentially end up with them supporting terrorism or committing terrorist atrocities themselves. Now, Shah, do you accept that? It's a safeguarding of young people Actually, issue. If it, was, um, if it took the safeguarding approach, then it would be very, very effective, but it doesn't. What it does is it, uh, and, and I absolutely um, disagree with Dr. Sama's take on uh, whether it's toxic or not, because if you talk to the vast majority, and I have a very large Muslim community uh, constituency in that, um, you know, the community within that are telling me very loudly and clearly. And in Bradford, I must admit, you know, we don't have 
the kind of the narrative around prevent, which is nationally amongst the Muslim community, as much in Bradford, simply because we work with the community. And this top-down approach, we've heard in the Home Affairs Select Committee's teachers and academics coming to us and saying they just don't have the right training to implement it, the prevent duty, they don't feel confident enough. And these figures actually reinforce that. If you have the confidence to talk to a young person, to address their issues, and, and when we talk about these young people who were, who were not who had no further action, who were stopped from going on to, you know, be, uh, being uh, exploited or, you know, being radicalised, then what happened? Did they have mental health issues? Are we, If we took the real safeguarding approach, I'd be very confident okay. that we would be addressing issues of alienation, of poverty. When, when young people are vulnerable, they're vulnerable for reasons, and those reasons are what we need to be addressing. Yeah. Okay, those okay. reasons of poverty, of disenfranchisement, etc. That's not what we're getting here. So it's not a safeguarding approach which has been taken by the government. I'd like it to be, but I'm not convinced it is. Osama Hassan, what is the difference between the way far-right extremists and Islamist extremists try to groom and radicalise young people? Actually, they're very similar, the two approaches. They're, they're like mirror images of each other. They're based on grievance narrative, false grievances. They're based on a, a desire to protect your own tribe and accuse uh, the others, uh, the other side, or Jews or anybody else, of, uh, of trying to wipe you out. So, so, so you, know, you get people who are basically saying that uh, everybody's out to uh, destroy the Muslims or target Islam. You get the other side saying people are out to destroy the white race, for example. And both sides say, the radicalizers, that is, that we have to tool up and, and get violent, for example. And that's why you see, you see children uh, um, reflecting that sometimes in their essays and comments in class. And again, the 75% no further action is actually the right approach, because in the vast majority of cases, uh, all you need is the teacher to talk to the, uh, to the young person uh, with their gentle way, and, and if needed, talk to the parents as well. A, a channel referral or prevent is an absolute last resort. So I think I would encourage teachers to use their common sense, don't forget their common sense, mm. and deal with this like safeguarding. A Durham academic study recently showed that uh, despite some criticisms, the, the vast majority of, uh, of school heads and managers were quite happy with how prevent was working, I'm and they were using Hifsa. it under safeguarding. I'm going to bring Hifsa uh, back in here. Um, what about the influence of mums and dads on their children when it comes to radicalisation? What about the influence of what kids can see on YouTube when Absolutely. it comes to radicalisation? Absolutely. I think we, we have to recognise that, you know, trying to stop people from getting involved in this type of activity isn't just the work of government, it's not just the work of um, pr prevent strategies or schools or colleges. This needs to be a community approach. Quick final thought. The, the figures today, when you, when you analyse them a bit more, show that people withdrew from the scheme, from channel, that's the more <coughs> extreme end of the prevent strategy. I hope we're making this clear to, to people. L let's just explain. Prevent, channel, just explain that for okay. us. Prevent is the government strategy yep. that tries to stop people from becoming involved in something that could radicalise them, take them down the avenue of supporting or committing a terrorist offence themselves. Mm. If somebody is deemed at, of being at risk they would then be referred through to the channel process. Got you, got you. 63 people withdrew from channel um, because they just didn't want to cooperate. I mean, what will happen to those 63 people? Uh, well, the channel is, uh, is voluntary because it, it's not criminal, it's pre-criminal, if you like. Yeah. <coughs> and uh, it's a one-to-one -one mentoring uh, process. And hundreds of people, thousands, have actually been through channel in the last 10 years, uh, or, or seven, eight years, and have benefited from that uh, and are grateful f uh, for that, especially young people who may have become terrorists, but uh, with good mentoring, they have been encouraged to you know, seek education, employment, and, uh, and have a fulfilling career. And again, this is both uh, people who could have become Muslim extremists or far-right extremists, or even, indeed far-left extremists. Yeah. Well, we've had a conviction of a far-left extremist who was planning to bomb uh, an arms fair, for example, recently. So uh, a lot of people have be benefited from this. The, the approach is it's not perfect, of course. There are, there are always mistakes in, in any sensitive issue like this, but uh, uh, we have to take stock of these figures and analyse them carefully okay. and see how we can improve things. All right. Sorry, that, can I just uh, sort of mention one more thing in, really in relation to that? That as well as sort of the work that's done by the intervention providers, you had two speaking to you earlier on, mm -hmm. we also have some fantastic projects that take place within local communities that are run by the communities themselves okay. that can also support these individuals. Thank you very much. Thank you.